All right, so with a solar panel maintained out of the way, uh, I can start worrying about the interior. Uh, so, uh, what I've got here is some uh, insulation. This is 45 millimeter thick, just standard rock wool stuff, and uh, a 2.4 by 1.2 meter sheet of uh, very thin 4 millimeter plywood. So the plan is to uh, put some insulation in the doors and the rear panels there. Uh, they, they, they have currently soundproof material in them, which does some good, but there's plenty of space to put just a bit extra to keep the cold out. And uh, to you know, essentially just to put a plywood sheet uh, across all this soundproofing material up here, basically just mount it on these uh, uh, ceiling rails and perhaps uh, shove it in underneath. Uh, the edge back there to keep it up, but we'll see what I do about that. Uh, I'm a bit worried about how to actually get it somewhat sturdy up in the front because there isn't really anything to mount it to except for uh, this rickety uh, front ceiling thingy, but I uh, might just draw a few screws and some kind of angles through it. It, it is sturdy enough, I think you could uh, decently Made a screw in it. Uh, no idea what I'm going to do about that uninsulated area there. I'm not going to be able to cover it with ceiling material, so I'm probably just going to put some uh, thicker uh, car soundproofing material on there. The stuff I've got here is really thin, it's like one centimeter, and it about the same thing for soundproofing nor insulation, so it needs. Uh, I I'm thinking that the wood is going to be non thermally conductive enough to just to do a good job with combined with the air gap we get in between there uh, when it's actually installed so that's what I'm going to do, I'm not going to bother filming it because I'm shit at carpentry and I'll just make a full light to myself and quite a few hours of confusing agony later uh, we have something which resembles a ceiling uh, I've used a jigsaw for everything including the long straight cuts which made everything take a very long time but uh, I've measured and test fitted everything and it should work just fine so this is the part that goes in the rear of the vehicle uh, it might not be too easy to see but uh, this edge here actually has a bit of a bend to it because the vehicles uh, it's about half a centimeter further back there than at the edges so I had to compensate for that but it went very well and uh, these little cuts are just to make room for the girders at the top of a vehicle. So the uh, roof panels will not align entirely evenly at the middle girder. Uh, this one's just going to, the rear one is just going to be sitting right at the edge of it, but that's fine. And I've made these little spaces which I'm just going to attach to the vehicle in order to make it a bit easier to just uh, uh, screw everything in place and to make sure that. Uh, yeah, everything's compressing together nicely so that the, there's no excess bending strain on the actual board. Uh, the rear e end of this is actually going to just uh, attach without any screws because I've noticed it is able to slide in between there. It's going to fit absolutely perfectly and uh, I wouldn't be able to really screw it either since the only screws I have are way too long. It, they would make little dents on the outside and I really do not want that. So, and now I'm just gonna drill the holes, paint it and it'll be good to go. And if you're curious, here is my very professional high-tech cutting jig where I just have three boards which I move about according to the situation and a really really bad jigsaw. But it worked, well enough anyway. And there we have the front uh, panel mounted. Oh, uh, it's a lot of work to be pointing upwards like that. Anyway, as you can see, I've taped the uh, spacer strips onto the uh, carrying bars uh, of the ceiling. They're just to tape down. Uh, I tried to actually put some tape on the other side of them and uh, tape the board up while I was mounting it, but uh, that didn't work. The tape I'm using didn't, just didn't have enough strength to it. But I just shoved it up with my hands and then started drilling holes and 
uh, putting in screws one after one. It stayed up very well with just two screws, so that was a, a bit of a relief. Uh, something I found was very important is uh, when, when it's a bit curved like this, it's very important to start in the middle, we do like three screws there, and then just step out one at a time because uh, the holes will otherwise be moving if you pre drill them, and that's not going to work out very well at all. I also had to uh, emergency add some you know, soundproofing here, and uh, there's actually some extra underneath that because I noticed when I just uh, test mounted it at first without anything actually coupling it to, through to the roof uh, it sounded very very hollow and resonant and that would make a lot of noise while driving but now I've got some some of these thicker pads which actually make contact with the wood and that's gonna do excellent as far as mounting it uh, in the front here it's entirely loose it just pressure fit kind of with the same different isolation I've put along the edge here, but actually feels rather sturdy. I'm not entirely certain as to whether or not I'm even going to need any real mounting over there. I'm very surprised by how sturdily it sits. And I'm also very surprised by the accuracy of my cuts because that is a perfect gap. I really like that. Given my woodworking skills, it's certainly commendable. So now I'm just going to mount the rear panel as well, and it it has a bit less drilling to it since it'll just slide in there. <sighs> and then I might perhaps paint them still today uh, and uh, let it dry the night. And there we have it. Both panels mounted, and that was a lot of work. Ah, it turned out quite well, except right along the edge here, I kind of miscalculated the length of the panels, so this would mount right at this little girder thing, and that kind of deforms it a bit if I torque the screws as hard as I'd like to. So that's a bit of a bummer, but all in all, I think it'll stay in place, and once I get it painted, that won't look anywhere near as obvious. Ah. It is now the next day, and I've got the ceiling painted. Isn't that spliffy? I do not mind that at all. Uh, so I just uh, used uh, the ba literally the cheapest uh, normal indoors uh, water-based paint, apparently Escaro Eco Seven. Uh, mat, as mat as have a come anyway, and uh, I shoved it on there with a 150mm brush, just long strokes straight across as one would paint two coats right after another, and uh, it's well, it's turned white enough for the camera to fail to focus, and that's good enough for me. Uh, so I did uh, uh, shove some paint on these. Uh, uh, damping pads because they were black before and uh, I uh, since they, the coating of these is soft so I couldn't mask them so I either had to be extremely careful around that edge or just paint them too so I painted them I left them kind of uh, kind of a little streaky on purpose because as these flex with time uh, you can see those little creases I think those uh, are going to basically crack up and give them a bit of a zebra pattern. So I figured I'll leave them a bit artsy and uh, not very furly coated, and it might turn into a bit of a cool effect in the future. <sighs> so, well, that out of the way, I'm going to move to insulating uh, the walls and rear doors. I actually returned that packet of insulation I bought and because a friend was very generous and donated these. Uh, five pieces of insulation for me for free, so that saved me $40 on this build, which is mm, very good when you don't have any income. So, that's what's up next. I'm also going to paint these, just since I have to take them off anyway, I might as well have put the rest of the paint on them. Uh, I'm not going to paint these little nipples, though. I think it might be cool with just a brain dotted white. Uh, this one's a bit damaged, but eh, who cares. 
I'm also going to try and do something about the uh, ventilation in here. Uh, I think uh, these vents lead to a small hole inside the bumper and I'm gonna hopefully mount a fan behind each of those to just draw uh, air either in or out, probably out, but we'll see how well that goes. I'm going to have to at some stage take the rear bumper off anyway to install the solar panel wiring because that's probably going to be going through that same hole which is somewhere around here and uh, again I don't like making new holes in the car that's just not the way I roll uh, but I think I'm going to leave that for another video and we'll just make this the ceiling video because that was a major project I'm entirely done for it took about two days in total but I do like the way it turned out so uh, thank you for watching Hope you found it interesting. Cheerio!